There's been war going on since the start of time. <laughs> and here we are. But there's been war going on in some form or fashion, in some space, since the start of time. This is just the latest of the next generation of wars. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent. I'm not being indifferent. But I just look at history from the, the Chinese dynasties, throughout African tribes, throughout Europe, throughout America, throughout South America. The world has been in a constant state of war. We've been at war with this pandemic for two years. You know what I'm saying? Before that, was at war with something else. There's always been some form of fashion of war. And I think what's happening to people, whether it's nation versus nation, ideal versus ideal, is some form of war. And there's winners and there's losers. And some people survive, some people don't. But it's always been. Like, I'm fighting a war against my weight right now. And if I don't win this war, I'm going to die of diabetes, high blood pressure, or something. I'm at war right now. That's not a casual thing. I'm literally fighting for my life, fighting this war of my health. And it's a war. Because at the end of it, if I don't get this, I leave sooner than I want to. So everything since the start of time has been, in some form or fashion, a state of war. Now, let me ask you on that note. So with, with, with the weight loss, has that been the catalyst? Basically saying that if I don't do something now... Like, I'm not going to be here several years from now. Or was or was it something else? Even though that's true, I haven't been winning the battle. I had a cupcake in your studio. I mean, saying they walked me around. I grabbed a cupcake. Didn't have to. I could have grabbed an apple. So I'm losing this war. So it wasn't like I took the charge and I make a change and I'm doing better. I'm still losing the war. But I'm in it. I'm definitely in it. But uh, I would say at this point, if you said, Dre, are you winning or losing that battle or that war? I would say um, I'm losing. Not giving up, but I'm definitely losing. How do you feel about that? I feel as though there's going to be a consequence one day that I can't see today. And because I can't feel the pain of my exit or the back-end health issues that I can somehow think that I'm going to muscle through and survive, but I know better. But I tell myself the truth that I want to hear. I rationalize the things that I need to rationalize, and I make excuses for everything else so I can continue to be selfish. Because that's what it comes down to, selfishness. So self-aware. I'm self-aware I'm being selfish when it comes to my health. Yeah. I can fly around the world. I can do interventions. I can stand on the biggest stages. I can influence and inspire thousands of people. I can save lives. But now I'm great at everything. But this one thing that has to keep my longevity and me seeing my son long and my mom and dad, all the stuff that matters, I say matters, is on the line with this particular war. Now, how do I win the war of helping others? How do I win the war of inspiring people? How do I win the war of helping companies change their direction or people influence communities? But the war of my health, I'm losing. Hmm. Maybe you need like the Andre of health. I need something. <laughs> so I mean, but the thing is, being I'm I'm in process, yeah. I have support, and I have people helping me. And the fact the first step is being honest. Yeah. I can't say I'm winning. I can just tell the lie to them. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How's it going to help? I'm winning. I'm lying. I'd be a lie. So step one is being honest. And I, as a alpha person, don't like losing. So embracing the losing, at some point, my competitive nature is going to kick in. And that I have to win thing has to kick in. And then, then I got a win coming. So this is interesting. By the way, I didn't see this all going this way, but I'll, I'll keep going because I'm, I'm fascinated. D d how do you reconcile? You, you thought about a lot of what you do is, is helping people make better decisions. Correct. Right? Like in, in driving some sort of behavioral change that leads to a different outcome in their life. Correct. And you're very good at it. But have you thought about like, so you're so good at it and helping others and that you're struggling with, with making these types of decisions health wise. Correct. So... I would say, why are you struggling, Andre? Why am I struggling in this space? I've overcommitted to helping other people to the point where I don't matter. 
And I said, my mission is the outcome of this intervention. My mission is the outcome of this helping this or being helpful, whatever the scenario is. In most instances, it's not about me. I show up to save somebody who's dealing with addiction or save somebody who's struggling in a marriage or save a company that's going in the red. And I put all of my energy and effort into them. Now I'm literally taking a step back and I'm doing nothing for like whatever amount of days it's going to take. And I'm waiting to kick in with, okay, let's put Andre first. Joe Polish taught me the saying, self-care is not selfish. So to get to self-care, I have to disconnect from what I was doing. Take that time in between to just transition and then make this my priority. Yeah. So I can't just snap my fingers and rearrange my life because I've been wired and conditioned to run a certain direction. I had a conversation with somebody this morning. I said, where are you from? He says, I'm from Haiti, a third world country. I said, brother, Haiti's not a third world country. There's only one world. And you're part of the human race and it's part of the world. You're conditioning yourself to believe yourself to be of a third world nation. You're just from a nation that doesn't have as much as the next. But one thing you do have in Haiti is happy people. What you have in Haiti are married people. What you have in Haiti is generation of people. They might not all be rich, like some people someplace in the world, but that doesn't make you third world. And I had to help him shift his thinking. And he was like, wait a minute, I'm not... I said, now, if I put you in a room with a lot of first world people, as you would consider them, you would think you're not worthy. And that's a condition of you taking yourself out of the mix, not you not being worthy to be in the room. You've believed the conditioning. So he had to make the reconcile. He had to reconcile the whole concept of third world nations. I've never heard anybody say second world nation for some reason. I skipped over second and went straight to third. Second was too close to first. <laughs> so, and he, his entire life, has been using the term third world nation that he's from. So you just diminished yourself. Right. So I have to disconnect from helping people, which for me is hard, because every day my phone rings with somebody else needs help. And so I have to disconnect from that for a period in time to actually say, I have to save Andre. Yeah. 